Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we're making this USB DDR dance pad using an Arduino microcontroller. Let's get started. What is a USB dance pad? Dance Dance Revolution is an arcade dancing game where a player must step on appropriate arrows as they flash across the screen in time with Japanese techno music. Well, I still love to play Dance Dance Revolution, or DDR, whenever I happen to be in a place that has one of these arcade machines, the majority of arcades in the United States have sadly slowly closed over the last decade and a half. As a result, the only way to consistently get an authentic dancing arcade experience is with a metal dance pad and programs like Step Mania, a Dance Dance Revolution emulator for home computers. Unfortunately, metal dance pads are expensive costing $300 or more, and often lacking interfaces and drivers needed to connect them to modern PCs. To overcome these problems, I decided to build my own USB dance pad with an Arduino microcontroller. The dance pad is made out of the following components. A 35 by 35 inch baseboard, four 1 by 35 inch dance pad borders, and five 11 by 11 inch stationary panels all made out of half inch thick MDF, four 9 by 9 inch riser panels made out of quarter inch thick hardboard, 16 8 inch strips made out of 1 half by 5 8 inch foam insulation tape, 12 metal button contacts made out of aluminum foil, four 11 by 11 inch button pads made out of quarter inch thick MDF, some paint and laminated graphics, nine 11 inch by 11 inch clear panels made from 2 millimeter acrylic, an Arduino microcontroller with associated wiring, and a 3D printed electronics enclosure. Let's begin by taking a look at the key electronics concepts behind the dance pad. This project this project is built around the Arduino Leonardo, a small, open-source electronics prototyping platform found in many of today's maker projects. The Leonardo incorporates the Atmega32U4 chip, a microcontroller that can be programmed to act as a USB input device, more specifically a USB keyboard. The working principle behind the dance pad is that the microcontroller sends out a keystroke every time a button panel is stepped on, which Step Mania recognizes as a button press. To do this, the Arduino must sense a step on a button panel as an input signal. Microcontrollers sense input by measuring the voltage of their pins, and can be instructed to measure or read a pin's voltage using code. If, during a reading, the microcontroller measures a large enough voltage on a pin, the microcontroller returns that the value of the pin is high. Alternatively, if the microcontroller measures low or no voltage on a pin during a reading, the microcontroller returns that the value of the pin is low. Changing the pin voltage from high to low as a button is pressed, therefore enables the microcontroller to sense input from the button. The concept that makes sensing button presses possible is the pull-up resistor. When configured to sense input, the pins of a microcontroller have a large electrical impedance that resists the flow of current, which can be modeled as a large resistor that internally connects to the microcontroller's ground. Current literally travels the path of least resistance. When placing another, smaller resistor between a microcontroller's 5 volt line and one of its input pins, current will follow the wire path and travel through both resistors to the ground because it literally has no other path to travel down. As a result, the voltage of the pin will be close to 5 volts, and the microcontroller will return that the pin's value is high. If the wire between the smaller resistor and input input pin is now connected directly to the microcontroller's ground line, which is at zero volts, current will not flow through the large resistor, instead flowing only through the small resistor directly to ground, because the total resistance of this path is less. Because of its direct connection to ground, the pin voltage is now also at zero volts, and the microcontroller will return that the pin value is low. A button between the small resistor pin junction and the ground literally acts like a switch for connecting and disconnecting the ground line at this point in the circuit. When the button is not pressed, and the connection between the junction and the ground line is open, Open, the voltage on the input pin is close to 5 volts. When the button is pressed and the connection is closed, the voltage on the input pin drops to zero. Once the button is no longer pressed down, the electrical connection between the small resistor pin junction and the ground line is broken, the voltage on the pin is pulled back up to near 5 volts, since current again travels through the large resistor. In the dance pad, each button is constructed out of three metal plates, one which is connected to the small resistor and 5 volt line, one which is connected to the ground line, and one which closes the connection between the two by being stepped on, causing the other two plates to touch. While the dance pad's buttons could in theory be constructed using only two plates, having the plates with the electrical connections remain stationary lessens its chance of failure, since the connections do not move during gameplay. Let's build the dance pad. Because I couldn't fit a 4 foot by 4 foot board in my car, I had my local hardware store cut a 35 inch by 35 inch piece, which will be the dance
dance pad's baseboard, as well as four 1-inch strips out of half-inch MDF for me. The 1-inch strips will make up the border of the dance pad. I first lined up the strips with one of the dance pad's edges, and marked where they intercepted the baseboard's opposite edge with a pencil. I then used a miter box to cut each strip to length. The next step was to use the miter box to cut 45 degree angles at both ends of each strip so that the pieces interlock to form a clean border. I used the remaining cutoffs from the MDF sheet to cut out the five stationary panels, first using a T-square to mark out 11 inch by 11 inch sections, and then rough cutting them out of the sheet using a jigsaw. I then carefully cut along the marked outlines with a bandsaw, ending up with five 11 inch by 11 inch squares. I followed the same procedure for the four 11 inch by 11 inch mobile panels which were cut out of a quarter inch MDF. Ditto for the four 9 by 9 inch riser panels which were cut out of quarter inch hardboard. In total, I had cut 13 squares. Five 11 inch by 11 inch by half inch MDF squares which will make up the stationary panels, four 11 inch by 11 inch by a quarter inch MDF squares which will make up the mobile panels, and four 9 inch by 9 inch by a quarter inch hardboard squares which will make up the riser panels. I next used a belt sander to add chamfers around the stationary panels. These will be used to the button wires throughout the pad during the electrical assembly. The angles of the chamfers do not have to be super precise, but should be large enough to easily fit multiple small wires underneath them. The middle stationary panel received a chamfer on each of its sides, while the outside panels received two chamfers, along neighboring sides. With the MDF cut, it was time to begin gluing components to the baseboard. Using construction adhesive, I first glued the borders to the dance pad. I then clamped the baseboard and edges together using spring clamps. I next glued the stationary panels to the baseboard, making sure that the square with the chamfer on each side was glued in the middle, and that the chamfers on the remaining pieces faced inward. I then let the glue dry for 24 hours. After the glue dried, it was time to paint the dance pad. I first applied a layer of primer to the dance pad, its edges, the stationary panels, and the button panels. After the primer dried, I lightly sanded the painted pieces. Thereafter, I applied two coats of flat black paint to all of the primed components, again lightly sanding between the coats, after which I let the paint dry for another 24 hours. With the paint drying, it was now time to make the button contact plates out of aluminum foil. I first attached the foil to a sheet of paper using spray adhesive. The paper adds structural integrity to the foil and acts as a backing sheet when the contact plates are cut out during the next step. After gluing the paper to the foil and cutting the paper back portions out with an X-Acto knife, I flattened the foil with my hand to make sure that the entire foil surface had bonded with the paper. The shape of the contact plates was designed using Inkscape, a free vector editing program available at inkscape.org. To ensure that the third connection plate electrically bridges the two contacts regardless of where the panel is stepped on, the contacts have an interlocking comb-like design which is commonly used in modern day game pads where the button traces are located on the gamepad circuit board. The next step was to cut the contact plates out of the foil using a craft cutter. A craft cutter is like a small CNC machine which moves a knife along the outline of the Inkscape design to cut it out of the foil. While a craft cutter makes cutting the plates out of the foil faster, don't worry if you don't have one. This step could just as easily be done with an X-Acto knife and a ruler. Once cut, I carefully peeled the contact plates from the craft cutter's mat. Due to the low stiffness of the paper and the plasticity of the foil, a heavy amount of curling occurred when I peeled the contact plates from the cutting mat. To flatten them out, I stuck each contact to a table with bits of masking tape and put some heavy objects on them for a few minutes which helped to restore their shape. After the contacts had flattened, I attached the 9 by 9 inch hardboard panels to the baseboard using spray adhesive and glued pairs of the button contacts to each 9 by 9 inch square panel. During the glue up, try to get as little glue on the foil as possible since the glue is non-conductive. After gluing the contacts, I then glued aluminum foil to the underside of each of the 11 inch by 11 inch by a quarter inch mobile panels to create the connecting plate that will bridge the contact plates when the button pad is stepped on. Next, I glued the 5 8 inch by quarter inch insulating foam tape to each of the button wells around the perimeter of the 9 by 9 inch hardboard. These will act as springs that will raise the button pad after it is stepped on. To complete assembly of the dance pad, I first glued graphics I had printed and laminated my local print shop to each of the 9 panels. I then cut 9 11 inch by 11 inch panels out of clear 2mm acrylic following the same measure, jigsaw rough cut, and bandsaw procedure I used to cut out the wooden panels. I placed each of the cut acrylic pieces on top of the panels and drilled a small pilot hole into the acrylic through the laminated graphic and into the wood below. During this step, be sure to keep the protective plastic on each acrylic sheet and drill slowly with firm pressure in order to prevent the acrylic from cracking. After drilling the pilot holes, I then removed the acrylic from the panels and enlarged the holes with the drill bit, creating a clearance hole for a number 8 screw. To test fit the pieces, I then fastened wood screws through the acrylic holes, graphic, and into the wood panels to clamp everything together, again making sure to drill slowly. After ensuring that all the pieces fit, I removed the acrylic from the panels one last time and peeled the protective plastic from each of the acrylic sheets. I then reattached them to each panel, at which point the dance pad was fully assembled. With construction complete, it was time to wire up the dance pad. I first designed a two-piece electronics enclosure for the Arduino using SolidWorks. 
computer-aided drafting or CAD software package used by engineers to design mechanical components. I then save the files as STL or stereolithography files, which breaks the components into triangular meshes. After this, I loaded the files into my 3D printing software, which generated the G-code that instructed my 3D printer how to manufacture the object, and printed the components out of PLA. All components were designed to be printable without support material, which significantly improved the look of the final object. While the printing process looks fast in these time lapses, the printing process actually takes a while. The total print time for both components was approximately 12 hours. While the enclosure printed, I uploaded the microcontroller code to the Leonardo. The Arduino code works as follows. The setup method initializes pins 4, 5, 6, and 7 as input pins, with their internal pull-up resistors enabled to save on additional wiring, and then starts emulating a computer keyboard by calling the keyboard.begin method. The loop method then executes and runs continuously, checking to see if the state of a pin changes from high to low or vice versa. If the microcontroller senses a state change on a pin from high to low, it then continuously sends out a keystroke until the state of the pin changes from low to high. At that point, it stops sending out the corresponding keystroke. Clicking the Upload button in the Arduino IDE compiles the code and uploaded it to the microcontroller. Once the LEDs on the board stopped blinking, the code was successfully transferred and the Leonardo was ready to be integrated into the dance pad. Once the enclosure finished printing, I screwed the bottom half of the enclosure into a corner of the dance pad's border and removed the four button pad assemblies from the dance pad. Thereafter, I drilled a wire routing hole through the middle of the dance pad's front border. To wire up the dance pad, I connected four of the button contacts, one under each button pad, together using wire. These contacts will be the connection to the microcontroller's ground line. I then wrapped a washer around the ends of each wire piece in order to increase the surface area for the electrical connection between each button contact and fastened it in place with electrical tape. I then connected a single, longer wire to each of the remaining button pads, running these and a longer ground wire through the routing hole, and adding electrical tape where necessary to keep the wires in place. To keep the wires organized, I slipped braided tubing across the wire bundle and attached a zip tie around the tubing on both sides of the routing hole to make sure that the wires didn't move and to provide some strain relief. This braided tubing bundle was then routed through the large hole in the 3D printed enclosure and connected to the Arduino in the following way. Red wires were connected to pins 4, 5, 6, and 7, and the black wire was placed into the ground pin. I then attached a micro USB cable to the Arduino's USB port and routed it through the slot on the other side of the enclosure. The final steps were to screw the top portion of the enclosure to the bottom portion and to reinsert the button panels. At this point, the dance pad was complete. It was now time to test the dance pad. I started up Stepmania and configured the button mappings of the dance pad in the options menu. I then got ready to dance. Let's see how this goes. As indicated by the full combo for the song, the dance pad is fully functional and ready to let me play hours of Dance Dance Revolution. While the dance pad is very responsive and is a suitable alternative to buying a metal dance pad, there are several ways that this project could be improved. First, the acrylic sheets that make up the dance surface are extremely brittle and therefore prone to breaking during manufacturing and use. After several hours of dancing, I ended up cracking the pad's down arrow and now also have several hairline cracks around the mobile panel screw holes. To avoid this, consider making the dancing surface out of polycarbonate instead of acrylic because this material is significantly more resistant to impact. Second, the electrical tape used to hold down the washers has a tendency to become loose during extended play, causing some of the buttons to become unresponsive. Instead of trying to adhere the washers to the foil with tape, I intend to drive a screw through the washer into the metal contact foil below and sandwich everything together. In case you're interested in making a dance pad for yourself, the Arduino code for this project can be found in the video description below. If you end up making this project yourself or have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or connect with me on social media. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching. Now go super make something. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. To keep up with my latest projects, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out more episodes by clicking on the video to the right. Connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and be sure to visit supermakesomething.com to download files for this and other projects. See you next time. Now go super make something.